For the first time since I've gotten the H2S, I'm going to be printing some ABS and you're gonna come along for the ride. Now, if you're not familiar with ABS, I'll put the real name somewhere. It's basically the plastic that everything in your house is made out of. Looking at this chart provided by Bamboo Labs, it's easy to see why people like ABS. It's budget friendly, water resistant, heat resistant, impact resistant, wear resistant, and you can add in some UV resistance in there if you want, but it's a very good polymer to print with. That being said, it's also one of the harder materials to print. ABS is notorious for warping off bed plates, having weird layer adhesion issues, and a few other things that if your printer's not like dialed in, it's just not gonna be a great time. That's where the H2S comes in. Taking a look off the Bamboo Labs website for the specs on the H2S, we can see that it comes with a hot end that's hardened steel and gets to 350 degrees Celsius from the factory. Those two things are great because that meets the temperature requirement for printing ABS. Then heading over to the Bamboo Labs wiki for the H2, you can see that it specifically says the hotbed gets to 100 and 110 degrees for ABS or PC to maintain layer adhesion and avoid deformation. Another neat thing with the H2S, that's not exclusive to it, but it's a neat feature, is the filters. So looking, in, looking inside the H2S on the back right wall, you push down here and this opens up and you can see your air filter. What this does is guys, air circulates inside the chamber because all the outside vents are closed when you're printing ABS. It's gonna catch all that particulate and help with the fumes from when you're printing the ABS. Quick that it does release fumes and you should probably do it in a well ventilated area or with an enclosure that's vented to outside now, before I even start printing, I am doing one thing that is going to hopefully eliminate external factors that would cause issues during the print. ABS isn't as hydroscopic as something like nylon, but it still does absorb moisture. That'll show up in your prints as like popping, bubbling, and bad layer lines. So, drying it properly can reduce, if not eliminate, those issues. Now to get my ABS dry, I have it sitting in my Sunwoo S4 because my AMS2 Pro was busy being used for another print. The S4 has an ABS setting that will run for 6 hours at 130 degrees I believe. So you just put it in there, let it bake off all the moisture, and once it's done you can pop it in and get printing. I also have some TPU in here just for another project that I'll probably be doing tomorrow. Now to test this thing out, I'm doing three prints. The first is going to be a radio bezel for a Suzuki Samurai that you kind of have to print at a weird angle because of the clips and it uses a decent amount of supports. So I figured that would be a good one. Uh, the second one is going to be a battery cover. Now it's like concaved and uses supports, but it's also kind of thin and covers the length of the bed. So I figured if anything's going to warp, it'll be that. And third is going to be the desiccant containers for the AMS2 Pro. Now, those are a pretty simple print, but all together it's like a nine hour print since I can fit it all on the bed. And I figured that would be a good way to test long like time prints with ABS on this printer. Hey, it's me from the future. The desiccant containers are almost done, so make sure you subscribe and then stick around till the end where I'll go over my final thoughts on ABS printing with the H2S. Here we are in Bamboo Studio with that radio bezel for the Samurai. You can see what I was talking about with the clips. Uh, I auto orient it just to see what the slicer thinks is the best position. There's times where I readjust it to what I think works better, but this time I decided to keep it. Make sure my supports are enabled, all my settings are good, and slice this bad boy up. Uh, there you can see the supports. It's going to take about an hour and some change. And we're going to hit print and we'll get into the time lapse. Here's a quick time lapse of the print. You can see the supports, which none of them fell over or broke off during the print. Like I said, it took about an hour or so, so let's pop it out of the printer and we'll check it out. The first print is done. One thing that I want to like drive home is let this cool off before you try to take it out. The bed gets to 90 degrees Celsius and that's like 200 degrees Fahrenheit and it burns if you touch it. 
Ask me how I know. Alrighty, so let's pop this bad boy out. Oh, wow. That came off super easy. Alrighty, here it is. The supports are like just falling off. That's insane. Those are the easiest supports I've ever taken off of anything on this printer. That's awesome. The first print, it came out great. I mean, the wire lines are fine. There's no huge imperfections or really any. I'm super pumped with it. So first print with all the supports, 10 out of 10. All right, here we are back in Bamboo Studios for print number two, Electric Boogaloo, the battery cover. Like I said, it's long, concave, not a lot of bed contact. I auto-oriented it and this is how it popped up. So this is how I'm gonna print it. Mind you, I have supports enabled and it didn't add any. And the contact on the bed for this is tiny and there's no brim. So it's gonna be an interesting print. This is only gonna take about 45-ish minutes. So we'll be back shortly to see if it actually printed. Again, here's the time lapse. And it broke down a 45 minute print into a five second video. Neat. So I'm going to go against my previous advice here of letting the bed cool and all that before popping this out because I don't want it to cool too much and just fall over because I think it's really cool that it just printed standing up sideways like that on its edge with zero supports. All right, so here it is. The battery cover thing that somebody ordered off Facebook. As you saw, it printed sideways, no supports, which is, I don't know, kind of insane from everything I've read about ABS. The layers look great. There's no, like, defects that I can see. So, second print, also pretty sweet. So, now I'm going to get started on the desiccant containers, and that's going to take us till the morning. So, we'll check back in then. Now, print test number three, the desiccant containers from Maker's World for my MS2 Pro and the little funnel thingy. But as you can see, it takes up a lot of the bed, it's a decent size print. I mean, it's nothing crazy, but there's a few tall things, there's a few flat things. So it's gonna take a while. And I kind of misjudged the time before when I was talking about it, cause it is gonna take 14-ish hours and not nine. But for the sake of the experiment, I guess that's a little bit better. So we'll get it sliced up and get it sent on over to the printer and then come back in the morning when it is done. And per the rest of the test items, here is the time lapse. Which is kind of funny because the way it took the pictures, it makes it look like it only printed the funnel. But as you can see, no failures, nothing lifting off the bed, everything printed pretty solidly and finished with no issues. Here I'm just going to get it popped off the bed. Again, the supports kind of just fell off like it did with the radio bezel. So I didn't feel the need to record the whole thing, but I had no issues taking it off the plate. The supports were no issues. Everything came out just as it should have. All right, so the desiccant uh, holders finished and they came out great. There's <clears throat> no craziness going on. You can see the bamboo came out fine. All the air holes are great. So I have zero complaints with this. All these prints have came out almost perfect, if not perfect. ABS on the H2S. Honestly, it was just as easy as printing PLA. Now, I'm sure that might just be my experience and people have had a majority of issues, right? But I can only speak on what I had results with, right? And I loaded the ABS in, I sliced my models and I hit print and they just printed and it was easy. <clears throat> I didn't have any bed warping. I didn't have any like layer shifts or anything weird happen. It just printed like it was POA, but way hotter because I burnt my hand. So printing ABS on the H2S, easy as pie. I mean, it couldn't have been any easier. I didn't even use glue. So if you're worried about it, don't be, just go for it.